This is AQA A-Level Chemistry and it's a required practical skills question based on RPA2. I'm going to recommend you pause, have a go on paper and then review. You will need graph paper if you're going to do that. So let's get the question up. So working through the first sections. And here's the remainder of the question. And now let's take a look at how we go about answering this question. So we have got here some data and your first marks are for plotting and working out delta t. You will remember doing this in the required practical, I'm sure. In terms of scale, you want to use as much of the paper as possible. It actually lends itself very well to having the minutes going right the way across, 0 to 12. In terms of the temperature, be mindful that you are going to extrapolate upwards. So don't just go to 21.7. You are going to need to go higher. I'm actually going to go to 23. Not only have I got my numbers on there, I've labelled and I've included units. Once I've got that, I can put my points on. There's all of my 19.8s. And then after the reaction takes place from five minutes onwards, I've got all of the others. Now, once I've done this, I can extrapolate my two lines. Extrapolating the bottom line shows me what would have happened if I hadn't added the reactant at four minutes. According to the trend we see here, it would have stayed at 19.8. When I extrapolate back on the top line, I am going to in, in ignore this particular cross. That's because the temperature is still going up. I am only interested in the cooling um, trend on this graph. So what we're essentially doing is saying this is the rate at which it's cooling. So had we got at four minutes an instantaneous reaction on addition of the reagent, without any heat loss, this is what it would have gone up to. And if we look at it that way, I can then draw that line in. I can measure across and see my maximum theoretical temperature would have been 21.9. So I can now work out delta T, my change in temperature, by measuring the difference. 21.9 take away 19.8 takes me to a value of 2.1 degrees Celsius. Moving on with the rest of the question, suggest a change to the experiment that would minimise heat loss. Now, with anything like this, you're going to be thinking of insulation. It might be you're going to use a polystyrene cup instead of a glass beaker. You might talk about using a lid. Both of those do the same thing. If we minimise heat loss, we get a better idea of the actual temperature change. Moving on to part D, suggest and explain another change to the experiment that would decrease percentage uncertainty. Now, if we consider uncertainty on any apparatus, on a thermometer, it might be plus minus 0.15 degrees C. That means whatever value I read, it could be one and a half degrees below that or one and a half degrees above. Now, if we want the percentage uncertainty to be lower, we want that 1.5 to be measured against a much bigger temperature range. So the way we deal with it is we get an increased magnitude of temperature change. 0.15 as a percentage of a 10 degree change is going to be much greater than plus minus 0.15 on a 30 degree Celsius change. And the way we do that is increasing the concentration of the acid. That will give us a much more exothermic, a much more energy releasing reaction. Moving on to part E, we've got an equation to begin. We are told the formula of ethane dioic acid. We know that potassium hydroxide is KOH. We also know we're going to make a salt. So the salt is going to be a potassium salt with an ethane dioate ion. So we're going to end up with K's on the end instead of H's. We know we're going to need two of them, which helps with balancing, and we can therefore see we're going to make two water. From there, we can move on to the actual calculation. And I'm moving down to the bottom left of the screen to do that. We're going to use Q is MC delta T. We have the mass, which is 100. 
The total volume of the two solutions is 100 cm cubed and the density, as we're told in the question, is 1. So 100 grams mass of surroundings. We're multiplying that by specific heat capacity, that's 4.2, again, provided in the question, and we're multiplying that by the change in temperature, delta T, which has been provided in the question. That takes us to a Q value of 1344, and you've got to remember that Q is measured in joules. Now, if you then consider that we are going to have to convert that to kilojoules per mole, we need to know how many moles we're dealing with. Let's start with the moles of ethane dioic acid. I've been given a concentration, 0.8, and a volume, which again, I've converted to decimeter cubed. That takes me to 0.02 moles of ethane dioic acid. Let's do the same with KOH. I have got 0.6 mole dm to the minus three, 75 centimeters cubed converted to decimeters cubed. That means we've got 0.045 moles of KOH. That means that it's in excess. We've actually used 0.04 moles of KOH. Bear in mind, this relies on you knowing it's a one to two mole ratio. So now let's take that calculation forward. My delta H, I'm converting my joules to kilojoules by dividing by a thousand. And then kilojoules divided by moles, 0.04, takes me to the answer 33.6. But remember, the temperature has gone up. That makes it exothermic, and that means it's absolutely essential. We have the negative sign there as well. Let's now move on to part F. Similar experiment. Enthalpy of neutralization was found to be negative 57. Suggest an explanation for the difference between this and the answer that you've just got in part E. So negative 33.6. Well, ethane dioic acid is a weak acid. Sulfuric acid is a strong acid, so we're now relying on some knowledge of strong and weak acids. Strong acids fully dissociate in solution. Weak acids do not fully dissociate in solution, but they will need to dissociate to react. So energy would be required to break those extra bonds in the weak acid. That's an endothermic process. That therefore explains the difference. That takes us to the end of this question. Thank you for listening and goodbye.